So, Jan, thank you for coming to Imagination Action. It's about people's imagination and exponential technologies that are all around us and what the human dimension is. AI, you know, hits on imagination, hits on exponential and humanity. Um, what, when those words are, are presented to you, what, what comes to mind? And, and you're playing a real leadership role to, uh, to kind of help inform and elevate and, and create a vision for where we can go and are going and should go. Uh, what, what, what comes to mind when you think of those things? Well, I think the most difficult thing is to come up with uh, a realistic vision, right? Because there is the, the vision that things are going to keep going exponentially, which never happens because nothing looks more like a, an exponential than the beginning of a sigmoid. Yeah. Everything kind of saturates after a while. So you have to be realistic about you know, what the progress is going to be. It, it's, it's not an exponential. It's a succession of exponentials as long as when a first exponential starts saturating, you come up with a new paradigm that continues it. Um, and, you know, uh, when you are in the kind of trenches of, uh, of research, um, you have to come up with those new paradigms. And they don't just occur. It's not a law of the universe that they have to occur. So, um, so, so I think, you know, keeping the um, kind of, you know, being cold-headed uh, to some extent, but enthusiast at the same time. That's, that's the, the right balance. Yeah. If you could turn the dials a little bit to can kind of focus the dialogue on AI right now to where you think it should be and where you think it, it needs to be, um, what, 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 would you, what would you kind of skew towards and what, what would you highlight? What, you know, you're a big brain, you're doing important research, but I feel like we got to get some of your ideas out there. And, and what, what would your agenda be? I think four things. First thing is uh, uh, tone down the old discussion about existential risk, which I think makes no sense. Mm -hmm. um, uh, second uh, is uh, uh, don't think that the current dominant paradigm is the one that's going to be with us three to five years from now. There's going to be a new one. Uh, that's, that's the stuff I'm working on that I'm, I'm passionate about, uh, that some of us also in, in research are, are working on. Um, so, so, you know, don't think like generative AI is like be all and all and self-supervised running of symbol sequences is going to solve every, every one of the world's problem. We're going to need a new paradigm mm. uh, for making machines understand the physical world, have persistent memory, being able to reason and plan. Um, so that's coming, hopefully, within the ne next uh, three to five years. Um, and then uh, the last two things is, uh, you know, AI needs to be disseminated widely, needs to be able to speak all the languages in the world, all understand all the cultures and everything. And that will Tower require, <laughs> right, it will require like open source uh, platform, AI platform. They're very expensive to train at the moment. So only a few outfits can do it. And at least one of them, <laughs> Meta, actually open sources them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that enables the whole industry and it also enables a uh, wide diversity of AI engine. And it's really important. That's the last point because uh, uh, you want a high diversity in the future uh, AI assistant that everybody will be using because all of our digital diet is going to be mediated by those things. So you don't want any kind of regulatory capture that forces you to use those AI assistants from two or three companies on the West Coast of the US or China. Great. Um, what's your daily diet of AI? Like, how do you use it? Um, do you use it to brush your teeth? You know, what's the first thing you do in the morning? What, what's the last thing you do? Um, that's, that's Tim Berners-Lee's assistant, if you could just take the call over there. Yeah. So, um, I mean, to some extent, as soon as you connect to the, any kind of online service, yeah, the data. Uh, social networks or whatever, uh, there's some AI, somewhat perhaps primitive AI system actually deciding what you see. Yeah. Right. So, so we are... But what, what are you intentionally doing? I'm just, I'm just curious, you know, to stay up to date on this stuff. Like, are you, you know, kind of like working out in the gym? Are you spending time... You know, experimenting with these tools, or you, uh, yeah, or you uh, use it to be creative, or you use it to be productive, all of the above. Uh, use them to be creative, certainly. Experimenting with them, uh, reading all the underlying papers. Uh, you use uh, I Notebook use, LM. Uh, uh, I, ha I haven't, you know, I played with it, but yeah. I haven't used it that much. But I, I definitely use code, genera code yeah. generation, like to write code. I don't write as much code as I'd like to, but yeah. I, I do. Yeah. And are you worried about the next generation of coders that are going to grow up with this calculator? You know, people said, oh, no slide ruler. People yeah. using the calculator are going to be dumb and we're, the planet's going to fall apart. No, do you think gonna Do you think that's going to be a no, challenge for the next no, generation of coders? No, it's not going to be true of this technological revolution anymore that it was true. You know, was that, 
Aristotle or one of those who, yeah. who, who said like, what is this like writing stuff? Like it's terrible, you know, if people can write, they're not going to remember anything, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and I wasn't going there, to, but like, I, I understand argue. what you're saying, yeah. Um, and so, you know, every kind of new cultural phenomenon or, or communication technology, there's always people who say, oh, this is going to make people dumb. Uh, and, and, you know, it just displays what people focus their energy and mental energy on. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, essentially, software developers now are all going to be act as if they are the manager of a large group. Yeah. That codes for them. Yeah. No, right? yeah. no I, I talk to very successful entrepreneurs and I say, hey, you know, you're a software guy, uh, you know, lady, how many engineers would you need now versus how many you had? And, you know, every time they're like, well, you know, and, and you could see they're like, oh, wow, my operating budget would have been much different. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. What, what's going to happen now is that software is going to be so easy to Come uh, develop that it's going to be fungible. Yeah. Like, you know, you're going to ask your assistant, like, write a piece of code to, like, you know, plot me this curve, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. The code will be generated and it will disappear within an hour because, you know, it would be so easy to produce, right? Yeah. It will be kind of consumable, right? Yeah. It'd be, you know, right. It's kind Last of like thing. consumable, this, you yeah. know. The, yeah. This Razors. is imagination action. You know, you've, you've presented at a few of them. W what do you think of it? Are you, 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 th you know, and maybe say the term imagination action. This is a nonprofit. We're trying to get good ideas out there. Uh, I mean, you know, getting people to kind of... Uh, express a vision for where things are going, uh, I think is, uh, is always good. Uh, I mean, I could feel the enthusiasm in the audience. Uh, mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah, no, you're a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I had had you walk out the door with them, you would have had like, you know, like Elvis, yeah. like the- Yeah, you, you, know, got, you got something wrong. You said, you said I'm like Madonna. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, you don't look as good. Yeah, yeah, no, I think you're sexy. <laughs> All right, you guys, this is Jan LeCun.